Hey everyone, in today's quick tip video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use the remove overlap function under the process overlap in the editing icon on Canvas Workspace for Computer. So just to save some time, I've already typed my text and I've got a couple of elements here to show you why remove overlap works better in this instance than subtract which is a function that you've seen me use a lot in previous videos if you follow my channel. So I've got Canvas Workspace com for computer, so the downloadable version. I've got that open, as you can see here on my desktop. Over on the right hand side, you've got like your properties panel. So you've got edit is the second icon down, and that's where you'll find the process overlap functions. OK, so under the edit tab if you scroll down you will see weld which i use a lot divide which i use quite a bit if i want to break designs up especially if i've got a design you know maybe that's been free on creative fabrica and i've brought it in and it's in it's in several elements and i can't ungroup it so i tend to try use divide subtract I have used a lot in videos where I want to punch a shape out of another shape, which is this end icon here. And then this third icon along is remove overlap. So what I've done, I've typed, I love my using a font called ask why, which is free from creative fabrica. And that will be linked in the accompanying blog post over on my blog. So if you're watching this on YouTube, Directly under the description of the video, it may say more or show more or see more if you're on a desktop. If you are on a mobile device, it might be a little like downward facing triangle, uh, you know, arrow type thing, whichever, click on it. And in the description, it will link, it will say my website and blog. If you go to my website, website go to the blog tab and look for the thumbnail of this video. Any links for anything that I'm using, so... I'm going to be using this font. I'm also going to be using an SVG to show you something that I made, which I put on a tote bag, which will probably be the thumbnail for this video, hopefully. So as I say, I've typed, I love mine. I love my using ask why. Then I type all in capitals. Then I typed the, typed the word Rottweiler again in the same font, all in capitals. And then I duplicated the word Rottweiler four more times. So these are all individual elements. OK, so five separate elements. Then what I did, I selected just the five Rottweiler words and still under the edit um, icon. I just aligned them all to the left. So I knew that they were all, you know, nicely lined up and I've got them kind of spaced apart a little bit. I might just move that one down ever so slightly using the arrows on my keyboard. So you can have these as close or as wide as you, you know, wide apart as you want. But I want to show you what I mean. So I typed the word Rottweiler again in the same font, although it looks slightly different, only because I've stretched it out. I've made it bigger and I'm just going to make it bigger just for the pros, um, just, just for this kind of explanation. So I'm going to fill it with red, just so hopefully you can see it better. And I've got a heart which I've taken from the basic shapes. So I'm going to put the heart on top of the word rottweiler so normally when we use subtract whatever we put on top gets punched out of what's underneath so for instance if you wanted to make an aperture card that is square and you want to punch a heart out of the middle you put your square down first then you put your heart on top you select both like so and you would use subtract so now you can see i've got that heart that's been punched out of the middle. OK, so I'm just going to undo that. Now, if I select the heart and send it to the back, so it's under the words and I select both again and select subtract, that punches the words out of the shape, but it, it, it you lose everything else that was overhanging the shape, if that makes sense. OK. 
So what I want to do, I'm going to just send this to the back again. I want to get the shape of a Rottweiler and I want to punch it out of four rows of this word. But if I put the heart on top of these four individual words and just select those four individual words and the heart and hit subtract, it all goes wrong. It subtracted the heart out of the top one because it was overlapping. But if I undo, because these other words are not touching each other, it doesn't know what to do. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the red because that's, you know, just for the, the exercise. And I'm going to get rid of the heart. I'm going to colour all these in, in red, in the hope that you'll see it better and I've got an SVG saved on my desktop just going to move this out of the way for now because when you bring things in they generally always come in in the top left hand corner so I'm going to go up to the top of my page and choose file import from computer and I'm going to find the SVG that I want to use and it's here, Rottweiler SVG. So I'm going to open it. Again, I think this was from Creative Fabrica. So I will link to this in the accompanying blog post. So now I'm just going to fill this in with black just so you can see it. I'm going to shrink it down because I want it to be the size to fit in these four rows. So I'm just going to shrink it down so I can see that it should fit in there. So I'm just going to select everything and bring it all up and try and zoom in a bit more for you to see. OK, so here's my Rottweiler. I've got still got my five individual elements. The fit, also, what I want to do, I want to create an outline around this so that when I cut it all in vinyl, if for any reason I want to cut, say, the letters in one colour and I want to cut the Rottweiler in a different colour, I've got a space where I can layer this colour over this colour and it will fit nicely. I actually have already cut this and I just cut it all in black so it didn't matter. But this is a way that if you want to use, you know, say two or three colours, just, um, you know, cut, cut your, cut your colours separately and it makes it easier for inlaying, if you like. So I'm going to leave the Rottweiler black and I'm going to leave all my letters red. So I'm going to come to my Rottweiler. I'm going to come to the Edit tab and I'm going to come down to Offset. Now, sometimes when you get these designs and you try to do an offset, it tells you that there's overlapping lines. And you can either go in and try and look at the nodes and delete nodes to make it work or sometimes another way is just to make the design really really big and then create your offset then select both of your designs and shrink them down I want to create um, I can't actually remember what I did so I'll do 0 0.12 for now I either used 0 0.08 or 0 0.12 in my original but it's it's about two weeks since I made the design I honestly can't remember and I just thought that you may be interested in seeing how to do this process so I'm going to say 0.12 I'm going to say outward I'm going to say rounded because it's kind of got curves and I'm going to say leave the original as it is because I want the original I want to use the offset as my whole, if that makes sense. So I'm also going to say create an offset line only around the outer edge because I only want the outline to be the offset. So I'm going to say OK. Now it's made my offset for me, which is fine. If for any reason it didn't and it said, or you get that message that says um, can't create offset because of intersecting lines, just make your design huge, you know, minimize your screen here and get your design and drag it out until it's massive and then do the offset. And then once you get it to work, 
select the original design plus your offset and then shrink it down to fit. But for now, it's this has worked. So this is what I'm going to use. So this is the design that I'm actually going to cut in vinyl along with the words, but I want to use the offset as the whole. So I'm going to put this now over. In fact, I'm going to put it back. I'm going to select both and I'm going to shrink both down a little bit because obviously I only sized the Rottweiler to fit in these four rows and I've added an offset now and it won't kind of fit. So I want it to fit in the middle of these four rows because I, you'll see when you see the thumbnail, the bag actually reads, I love my Rottweiler and then the Rottweiler itself is cut out from these four rows and you've got the picture of the Rottweiler in the middle. So again, I'm just going to fill this offset with black just so that you can see it. So I'm only choosing these bottom four rows and the Rottweiler. So I'm going to select those. As I say, normally I would use subtract, but if I use subtract, as I showed you before, this is what happens and this is not what I want. So I'm going to select the four bottom rows plus the Rottweiler. And then this time I'm going to use remove overlap. So I'm going to left click on it and it doesn't look as though anything's happened. But if you left click anywhere on the page to deselect this and then left click on your offset and drag it away, you'll now see you've got the punched out effect over the four rows. So now this can come in here and sit in here and I can get rid of the offset now because I don't need it. Now, like I say, when I cut mine, I selected it all, I right clicked, I made it a group, I came over to transform and I flipped it so that the words were backwards and I sent this over to my scan and cut machine and I just cut this all in black so I didn't really have to worry about having this gap around it. However, let me just flip it back so you can see it the right way around. If you wanted to say, so if you wanted to say, for instance, cut all these elements in red, but you wanted to cut your focal point, in my case, the Rottweiler, say in black, what you would do, you would select all these. I would right click, make them a group, flip them so you don't forget, select your main object, flip that so you don't forget, then send this to your scan and cut machine, put some red vinyl up at the top and put some black vinyl at the bottom and send this to cut. And once it's cut and you weed it out, let me just turn it back the right way. You would put the red layer on your t-shirt or bag or whatever it is you're, you're putting it on. Then you would get your black layer. And because you left that 0 0.12 offset edging, it makes it easier for placing this in so it looks nice and neat. If you just did the remove overlap without an offset, this would be a tight fit to get in these letters. And if you don't get it, you know, downright, it could look messy. But because this tiny little gap offset gap was left if you like it all fits together nicely so you know you would press your red vinyl and then peel your transfer tape away and then you would put down your second lot of vinyl cover the whole thing and press it again and then you've got like a two color design you could also if you wanted to you could do each one of these layers in a different colour. So you would just, you know, press each individual layer all lined up together. And then because you've got this gap again around, it, it's easier to put your focal point in. So that's a way of using remove overlap, which helps you when you've got 
text, especially one that's not welded to itself and two where it's not welded to anything else. So I hope you found that helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.